Hey guys, Jeff here today and I'm installing a bathroom vanity from the Home Depot. This is a straightforward project and a great way to save some time and money on your bathroom renovation. Let's jump into it. What I've got to do now is I've got to do the measurements. I've got two water supplies and a drain coming through the floor. I've got to translate that information here. I've got a core drill at the bottom of this. I want to try to get that nice and clean looking, right? Like, we don't want to have huge holes in the base. Uh, so let's get into that. We have to identify, first of all, where our center line in that bathroom wall is going to be. So we've got a few different things that we're, we're considering here with this vanity. One is the size of the box. Two are what looks centered. If I go based on the floor tile and I go to the center of the floor tile for my vanity, I don't have enough cabinet space to get all this plumbing in. This is a different design than the one that I was going to get. I had a lot more flexibility with that one. This one has a very small box inside. It's like only 16 inch. So I really, I only have one option here and that is to install the vanity based on the, where the plumbing is. And you can see 16 inch cavity gives me plenty of wiggle room. I have about four inches of wiggle room left or right. So if I go from here is the center, if I go here, then I've got a grout line in the center of my vanity. At least that would look intentional, right? And then that would make my cabinet coming off here, 18 inches off the wall. That's not going to be an issue. And then my cabinet would go from there to here. And it's only coming out this far. So that's not an issue. Leaves me a place to put a waste basket. Now I also got to consider this space from the tub to the wall. 35, 37 inches. The center of that space is right here. But if I center my vanity off the center of the space, and I'm gonna have this line just off center, and that's gonna look stupid because the front of that vanity has two drawers with an obvious line on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that line and line it up with this grout line so it looks intentional and I don't have anything that makes you go, whoa, that looks kind of off center. Like what's going on? Lots of things to consider when you're doing this kind of installation. So really want to think the end from the beginning, what's going to look best, what's going to function best. But at the end of the day, if I have a center line on my cabinet that's an inch and a half off of this major obvious grout line coming right up the middle of my cabinet, I'm going to be hanging a mirror. I want it to be on the wall looking centered as well. So the center of the, of the cabinet on this grout line seems to be the most logical place for me to function. Okay, so we're gonna just mark down my grout line based on the Schluter here. Nice and simple, okay? Now I can measure left and right and measure from the back of the wall to the center of all of these fixtures. That's the number we're looking for. So this one, we're gonna go with uh, yeah, we'll call it five and a half, okay? Okay, and then this one, I'm gonna go two and a half, two and a half, those works for both of those. All right, and then left to right, we're gonna go one and three quarters. And then three and three quarters. Six and three quarters. There we go. So now we got all of our numbers. We'll translate that onto the back of the box and then we'll core drill it all out. All right, guys, my counter is cabinets, or it's actually 47 and 7 eighths. So we'll go to 24 as my mark. Right? And then I'm going to just remove an eighth by marking next to that. So there's my center line. Okay, we'll make all of our measurements off of that. All of this is going to be inverted. So I'm going to go five and a half inches in, one and three quarters over. So that's my mark. Five and a half inches in. That's my center. And then on this one, I'm two and a half inches and three and three quarters and six and three quarters. Well, that's going to require this. Both of those are at two and a half. All 
right, so there's my three holes. Not difficult to do. We'll do the uh, water lines first. So I'm going to drill this in at one and a quarter. Let me slide that up. Put in the locking nut. One and a quarter hole is actually, it's more than I need, but if you notice those water lines kind of are on an angle. And after I cut them off, I'm setting this in. I don't want to have to be fighting around with it. So I can just stick a pen through the hole into the water line and then redirect it to come through the holes. Uh, we'll show you that technique in a second. And then for the drain, it is one and a half, two and a half is a little overkill. Two inch shot would be good. I have a different option here. That's smaller, that's smaller, that's smaller, that's bigger. All right. Yeah, that's not terrible. That's the kind of hole that you can, you can fix up with some silicone. Again, the goal is once we're done the install, we don't have any gaps in the cabinet that allow for the transfer of any little creatures that might be existing underneath your trailer to ever find their way into your vanity. Whew. Do I ever miss my DeWalt drill? <clears throat> okay, let's do this. First water supply. Now this is your peak hole, right? So you can actually look through and see the tip at the a drill bit going, and you can double check. That was our center line. We're in great shape. The secret here is to not use much pressure and allow the little um, the drill bit in the middle to start burrowing a hole that keeps it rock solid. Okay. And then we just spin it right back on again. Lock that in place. Next hole. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my reciprocator with a metal blade and cut these water lines, okay? And just to make it nice and simple, I'll be able to hold it still with my pliers so I don't have the pipe vibrating all over the place. Yeah, that wasn't perfect, but it wasn't bad. <laughs> Right, there we go. And for whatever reason, I don't know why I glued that on, but it doesn't need to be glued. I gotta cut the cap off as well. And I can't get underneath it, so we're gonna have to chisel this cap off afterwards, which should be easy to do. I'll show you how to save that stub. Interesting. Hair in the drain is nasty. All right. So I'm going to score this. A couple of spaces here. Come on, honey. Oh, bloody hell. <clears throat> Stop putting up such a fight, will you? There we go. That's got her. Okay, now, yeah, it just peels off. You can see, that's a watertight joint, but it is, uh, <laughs> it's not soldered and it's not glued. It's just, what do we call it? a solvent so it's melted together which means you can replace it 
and then reuse it if you need to. Now I'm just going to take the edge of my knife, mark up the sides, make sure the edges are nice and clean. Inside and out, so we don't grab hair in the, in the future. All right, now I can put on a coupling and an extension of pipe that gets above the height of that cabinet. I gotta go get that measurement before I move any further because I don't wanna do any work here that's too low to be convenient when we get the cabinet in place. So I just double checked and I need these pipes to be eight inches above the floor. Now the tile is already a half inch above this. I'm short. That one was, well that's, hang on a second, that's eight inches. That's, is that, am I gonna be able to work with that? Yeah, eight is ideal. So that's gonna be okay. This is still going to be sticking an inch or so above the, above. So if I just put this on here, I'll get to eight. All right, and I'm going to use the ABS to PVC green glue. Uh, it's more expensive, but it works. CPVC to CPVC, no problem. Just, okay. If you have it, you can use it. If you don't, Remember, you got to use the purple as a primer, and then you can use the solvent. But that works just as well any day of the week. Now this one, however, I got to put on a piece of pipe extension to get this high enough. All right, here we go. So we want to go to eight inches on this one as well. I'm only at one and a half. All right. I gotta cut a piece of pipe. I'll bring the pipe to us. I'm gonna cut this extremely long. All right. Because. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install this one after the cabinet goes in place. All right, I'll just load up the green on here. And I'll just prep it with this so the surface can be prepped. Lift the cabinet in place, I'll put the green on and I'll stick it on through the hole and thread it in. And then we can worry about the exact height where I'm gonna cut this to reintroduce all that old plumbing I cut off weeks ago. I had it all sitting in storage because I'm not gonna go out and spend the money to repipe something that was working when I got here. <laughs> all right. Let's go bring the vanity in, stick it in place. Bob's your uncle. All right, so to install a vanity, I recommend take out all the doors and drawers. Make this just like less than half the weight because you're going to be lifting it up onto the pipes. And if you're a DIYer, you might be working along. But just so you know, these um, gliders come with a locking pin here. You just squeeze it up. Oh, sorry. Squeeze it down. What am I, what am I talking about, eh? Here we go. And it should release. Here we go. Ah. I don't know, that's a normal one. Okay. I like to stack them in the same order that I remove them in case they did any kind of adjustments on site while they're manufacturing. They might be the same size, but they might not go back in the same hole. Okay. All right, and I got a door. Yeah, it's soft closed. It's just not a quick release. So you got to loosen up here and here. My God. Are you freaking kidding me? The only way to take this door off? Okay, I've never experienced this before, guys. This is some really interesting hardware. Seems like the only way to take this door off is to remove the hinge from the side panel. And that's not something I'm really to commit to because this stuff is all particle board and I don't want to start removing screws and then putting them back in again, weaken up that connection and then my door doesn't work next week. So I am going to just put this back. Suck it up, buttercup. I don't want to risk destroying that door's ability to open and close. All right. Let's see how heavy this bad boy is now. <laughs> oh, 
Oh yeah. Yeah, that's still a two man lift. All right. I was hoping, but all of this particle board, man, it really does weigh a ton. Okay. <sighs> so, this is where you gotta call a neighbor. The way this is built, if I try to put it on end and on a carpet and slide it in or something, I'm gonna destroy the integrity of this cabinet. It will break, okay? It'll just come right apart. Resist the temptation to try to do this on your own. Look at this. Screws in the, in the side panel of press board, okay? That ain't holding worth nothing if you put any torque on it. So we're gonna just wait. Probably get my camera guy here. Put the camera on a tripod. We'll set the shot up so you can see it lifting over the pipes. And uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to pay him to give me a hand because he ain't getting paid to do no building. Here we go. Um, just so you're prepared for this, the way they designed this, they put these little the pedestal feet in the middle as well to take the structural weight that the, the center bars here carry down. And they've made contact with the tile just fine. The back corners are fine, but both of the front corners right here, it's just off the ground a little bit. So when I put weight on this, right, it's like it's moving around. I've only got a couple of options. I can take the cabinet out, I can turn it upside down, and I can install some new feet that actually thread out so I can make adjustments to the floor. Because these ones don't do an adjustment. They're just on a nail. There it is. Okay, now it's contacting the ground. But it, since it's on a nail, not a screw, if I put my weight on it, I'll just push the nail back in. <laughs> the other thing we can do is what we call a silicone shim. Yeah, this is crazy, but it works. All right. I'm gonna encase that corner in silicone. Because <laughs> it's in one of those hard to see places, right? Now, can't see from the backside. I use my finger and press it right in underneath there. Okay. There we go. Now, now I gotta wait a full 24 hours before I put the countertop on. Otherwise, the weight of the countertop could cause me to squish that and push it all out of the way. And then it's no longer a shim. But if you add the silicone and then install the counter later, it'll act as a structural shim and transfer load. <laughs> Just to bring you up to speed, um, I grabbed a couple pieces of uh, vinyl flooring that was left over from the bedroom job. They were five mils thick, and I cut a couple each on each side. It was a perfect fit. It became the shim, so now it's the structural load-bearing point until that silicone dries so I can keep moving forward here today. Before I put this in, though, I should update my plumbing. All right, guys, so here's my pipe for the drain, and here's the old assembly, right? So I've got the drain, I've got a clean-out, I've got a P-trap, and I've got my vent. Now that goes roughly there, okay? And here's my challenge. My drain and the new sink is about right here. That's where the drain comes down. So I gotta find a way to get my drain that comes down here to line up with that P-trip. And that's not doing anything from there. Now I can I'd make an adjustment here and shorten this up. I can cut this pipe and close it in a little more, blah, blah, blah. But what I wanna do is move this pipe back to here, okay? So that I've got the ability to install this relatively in line and get this pipe. Well, see, now that's from the corner, that's probably almost perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure and cut my pipe to stub here. Oh, shit. Okay, so we're going to do some of this rough plumbing before we put the countertop on, obviously. So I'm setting it inside the collar, checking my measurement. If I go to six inches, that gives me half inch above the counter. It's perfect. All right, I'm gonna use my 
dry erase marker for all my marks. Here we go. That's pretty, pretty darn close to perfect thing. Yeah, that'll be perfect. Mm, a lot of time has gone by here, so we're gonna try to. Well, that's not gonna happen. All right, we'll just paste, paste up this. Uh, it's fitting really good. Get that in there. Hole. There we go. this one aiming for the back corner okay I'm gonna put a piece of pipe Son of There we go. Ah, nice. Now, <laughs> I'm gonna put this in here just for storage for now. I'm gonna put the sink on and then we're gonna measure. I wanna get the sink in place so I can measure the height of this location relative to where the sink goes because then I can make an adjustment on my pipe, right? So I can reduce the number of fittings that I need to add to this contraption. So let's just get an actual measurement. Here we go. Time to put the sink in place. Have a look here. All right. Now this is still all dry fitting. It's temporary. In the real world, we can't just set it on and walk away, okay? So, because that would look like crap. Hmm. That's a little bit better. Not much of an overhang on that bad boy, is there? Phew. Is what it is. <laughs> All right. The faucet is going to have the drain in it as well. So let's open this up. Have a look and see what we've got to work with. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to be using that. Nice. Nice. Quick connects. Plastic drain kit. Well, isn't that bloody disappointing? Oh, with a damn plunger. You see this, guys? There are two kinds of drain kits in the world. One, you get this ball plunger, it goes on here, and then you attach this to that, and then you come through the top and you attach this to that, and all this crazy wonky crap works together to open and close the drain. I hate it. Absolutely hate it. Which is why I generally refuse to use it. So what we're gonna do instead so I'm going to pop down to the store and I'm going to pick up a drain that is a push drain that doesn't have this other connection on it, okay? And then I'm going to install that in this countertop and then we'll measure back to our P-trap. <sighs> Pain in the butt. While I'm there, I'm going to need something here that threads to this one and a half inch pipe or one and a quarter inch pipe, okay? So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my phone, I'm going to take a picture of this, and then I'm going to make sure I buy all the parts to go from here to the sink. This is just not how things are done in Canada. I'm not familiar with your, your plumbing. It seems 
rather weak. But uh, it's all right. It's one and a quarter inch pipe with a male thread. You know, we'll just we'll just do the math backwards and get the fittings we need, and then we'll get this installed. All right, off to the races. You can tell right away that this fits inside this. So I'm missing whatever collar piece it is that would make a compression fitting. Okay, so I'm going to be picking up another one and a quarter inch pipe drain kit that goes in here. That even looks smaller than one and a quarter. Yeah, no, it's one and a quarter. Okay, good. All right, so at least it's all the dimensionally the same size as what I'm used to. Um, I'll be right back. <laughs> what else do you do? I gotta go shopping again, damn it. So just for fun, we're gonna take a look at this, the one that comes from Delta, okay? And it is a, um, a plunger style. Like I said, you have to take this off, put in the rod, and then it pops up the top. But in order to install this one, you have to thread the top off, okay? And then install this from underneath, and then put the top on. So then you've gotta be holding this thing like this, okay? And then you have to thread the top on, twist the bottom into place, and then, uh, 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 there you go. That's how that's done, okay? Now what this doesn't have is it doesn't come with a gasket, the seal here. The only gas you got is the one that goes underneath for the sink, and then you got this tiny little space here to force it up to get compression, and you got no real way to hold the top of this without sticking your fingers in it and trying to hold it. It's a stupid system. It needs a gasket. So then you have to go buy some plumber's putty and or fuss around with silicone. That just makes a mess of your sink. This is a better way to go about it, okay? This is from Kohler. This is a push and plug and release system. No extra bars, no extra rods. Now look at this. It already comes as one piece. Done. You simply drop it in and it has a washer gasket. Bam. Now that is the way it should be done. Nice and simple. Even the washer has the threading on it so that you can thread it up nice and conveniently here. Okay. And then you just put this great big thing on here, which is nice because there's no obstructions. So you can get your man hands in here and tighten that up. Knowing you got compression at the gasket on top and down here, knowing it's plastic parts, tighten until you know it's nice and firm, okay? That's not letting the water down. And that is Kohler, love it. But now we have our finished height, okay? So from the countertop, anywhere between 17 and 19 is a nice place to be, okay? So let's see if this is going to work. So that would work. It's actually a little bit too tall right now, okay? This you want below this, okay? So right now, my current height right here. Okay, now watch what we do. We're gonna take measure from the base of the cabinet here inside for that mark. And I want my stem to be no taller than 15 and three quarters. So I'm gonna write that down. Okay, 15, three quarters. Now, in the back corner, I also have my plumbing sitting off the ground five inches on the inside. So I only have room for 10 and three quarters. So this lines up around here. I need this, cut it 10 and three quarters. Now if I cut that and I stick this pipe into that fitting, I should be able to bring this right close to that sink. But I'm measuring off of this, okay? So I'm actually gonna cut it a little bit more, I'll take an extra quarter off so that the end drain will sit somewhere around here. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. And even if I screw this up, <laughs> I have a coupling on hand so I can add more pipe, right? But the key here is to cut and then dry fit and make sure everything is connected all the way to the sink. Once it's all dry fit, you take it all apart, okay? 
and then we'll lift the sink out. We're going to attach the faucet system to the sink first, then set it in place, and then connect the rest of the plumbing. Now, I just saved myself about $35 of the fittings by saving this pipe. Now, take my knife, I'm going to deburr it. It's not efficient, but it gets the job done. If you don't want to own every tool and every trade in the handbook, right? Okay, so we're going to just take this off now. Okay, we'll do a dry fit test here. Okay, that's going to work. Now, okay, so I'm just feeling around for it. Hit that rib. Yeah, that's going to work just fine. The only thing that's wrong is the, the, the dimension here. Okay, so I can bring that, make, the, make an adjustment, cut this pipe. We'll do all that later. But now I know that all of this is fine. The key is to save this gasket right here. Okay, that one's necessary. All right, this one's built in, but this one isn't. So don't lose that. We're gonna need some Teflon tape to con connect those parts later. My height is good. I'm going to go ahead and glue that in now. And then I'm going to put on my water supply. We'll glue those in so that we've got all that taken care of. So that after I put my sink on, the only thing left to do is to connect this and connect this. Teflon tape, a couple of compression fittings. I bought. Now, is that going to work? That is the million dollar question. Oh, come on. Shut up. <laughs> oh, damn it. Maybe that works. <clears throat> yeah, that will. Okay. All right. Got to get used to the plumbing around here. It's totally different. Okay, so I've got my new cap with my gasket. This adapts down to the inch and a quarter pipe that's coming out of the drain. And that'll go to there. So we need Teflon, Teflon, and Teflon. Oh, that's garbage now. Okay, there we go. Those are for later. Now, we need to glue our water supplies in. Here we go, we're gonna just little squish there. Okay. Push and turn. And then we'll rub that pipe there. And there we go. We're going to make this pretty. There we go. The reason you push while you twist is it doesn't take as much compression because the lines underneath aren't attached to anything. There we go. Okay. Um, just to be sure, I'm going to throw a wrench. Come on, hurry, hurry up. It's going to dry whether I like it or not. And I'm going to give it a good twist and a push. There. And I want it there. It's just consider when you reach in to turn it off and on, that is right where you want it. Okay, now, these are split floor and ceiling plates, okay, more than one way to do this. They look great, but you can also, because they're made of plastic, they have a weak spot on them, okay, and you can turn them like that, and you can pretty much twist them to go around just about anything. That was a battle. <laughs> okay. Water supply. Connection glue. Mm. 
pin, get that handle. It'll be easy to work with. Loving it. Okay. Oi, 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 oi. All right, now, the faucet risers, I've always found it's easier to connect them to the sink. And then after you install the can cabinet, connect these two afterwards, because I can see and have access. I don't want to install the bottom now and be working up here, right, with wrenches. Very difficult. That one's done, that one's done. Also got one for the drain. I don't even know if there's enough room for it, but I thought I'd pick it up and try. You know, at the end of the day, it'd be nice if everything looked really pretty. Now I'm working against a fitting and not the size of the pipe. Is there any wiggle in the room? Ah, snap that in. There we go. That'll make a nice clean cabinet. Whew, now the prep work is done. Let's, uh, let's connect the faucet. Here we go. Just before we go any further, this one is labeled hot. Okay. Um, traditionally, hot goes on the left side. <sighs> Depending on your jurisdiction, just confirm before you go forward, guys. Okay. I know in uh, some areas of Quebec, it's very, very common to put the hot on the opposite side. And, you know, that's cool. It works the same, just as long as you know. All right. So, we're going to have an open and closed position here. Come to the front. Okay. All right. Or is it? Yeah. That looks gonna, that's going to look really freaking weird. But it does that. Here, let me just confirm with this picture. Yeah, that's the off. That's the on. And that's the hot. That's the left. All right, cool. The only one to do this once. Okay? So what we're determined is that the off position is straight across the back and you turn it towards you. Okay? So that's the position. Now, the hardware that I gave us to attach this to the sink is this silver plate. All right? It goes over all of it. And then this locking ring. Now it starts with the screws in the open position. Okay? You slide it over top. And you slide it over top. And it barely makes it. There we go. Okay? And the purpose of this is to create the compression. Now this is a 8 inch widespread faucet installation. So the three individual pieces. It takes a couple of extra minutes. Okay. Now, when you have it roughly where you want it, the key then is to come down here and make sure that the handle is exactly where you want it in the closed position. Okay. You take the, the screw with this, which is on the brass thread, and this is brass, this is steel. Now that it's all snug, well, you know what? It's too much of an angle. I'm going to strip the screw. So I'm going to use an extender, okay, so that I'm, my drill is coming straight at it. And that's all you need. Just a little bit of compressive strength there. Okay? And then that is in the right position for the rest of its life. And if you're not happy, like me at this very moment, you can back off the one side. Give it a twist. Until you're happy. And then drive it again. Now that's it. Now I've torqued. Now I've created so much pressure here. There's, no, there's not another system in the market that gives you this much pressure. The purpose is the threads, they're both a different distance from the countertop on each side. So by having that set screw, you can actually create perfect torque and pressure on both sides and never will back off, okay? And that's why we use these kinds of systems. All right, so cheers to Delta. Here we go. We got that one. This one is different. Here we go. This one has a mounting 
plates on it. And you know, see this? This is a gasket, and then the mounting plate. The mounting plate has two ribs on it here, corresponding with the back end of the faucet. Okay, so we're gonna go like this and install that and that. And so that what happens is when this one gets mounted, this isn't gonna be turning on you. This will hold this in place. Okay, now this one operates a little differently. Okay. Great big steel bracket here. And it's designed to have room for that whole rod assembly on the back side of it, okay? Now, I can't stand that rod assembly, so we're not using it. So my job today is to try to get them positioned on the hole the same depth as the other handles. So we'll get that finger tight first, adjust it. And we'll use the wrench. Put that under pressure. Okay, that one's not going anywhere. All right. And we got the third one, which is the cold side. Again, it'll say like this in the closed and then open forward. Make sure you confirm that function. If it's already open and you install it this way and you're all done and you haven't checked, then you go to use it and you have to close up by going backwards. <laughs> And there might not be room for, for you to do that. So here we go. That's closed. Again, make sure the screws are about the same depth here. The steel plate first. And then my screw on plate. Put that over there. Now, if you don't want to risk cross threading here, you can go backwards until you feel it sit in. There it is. If it doesn't go on that easy though, you're cross-threading it, so just back it off and fix it. All right, here we go. A little more snug, so then I can maneuver it and it'll hold in place. I also want to check the depth, the distance from the middle. Make sure that they're the same. I like that, I'm happy, happy, happy. Okay, same thing. Straight across, get my drill. Tighten both of these screws up. That's it. Next, we're gonna take our faucet risers and we're gonna attach these. We don't need any goop or, or thread in or sealants. They come with a gasket inside. Okay, we're just gonna get them finger tight for now. You can see why this is so precarious, right? This is a soft copper rod. And so it goes to a brass fitting and to a steel that's on a gasket that you have to hand tighten. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna be using my crescent wrench to hold the brass nut while I get my quarter turn on this bad boy. Okay. So I'm holding this one still to make sure that I don't twist that soft copper. Now I'm compressing that gasket into the brass fitting. Perfectly happy with that. I'll do the same thing on this side. Okay. Okay. You don't have to over tighten this. Um, if, even if you're a 65 or 70 year old little five foot lady, you can do this, okay? The gasket is not that stiff. And if you put everything you got into that, I guarantee you don't have to overexert yourself and risk hurting yourself. Once you make positive contact, an extra quarter or half turn is all it takes. That squishes the gasket and your water tight, all right? Remember, water pressure inside the city line is only 50, 60 PSI in most cases. It's not that strong that it's gonna come firing out of here, okay? We're not going into space, we're just moving water, all right? Now, the last thing is connect all the dots here, okay? And we can do that right now. It's not going to be difficult. These are quick connects. The faucet goes in the middle. Cold goes to one side. Take off those safety caps. 
Listen to the click. Done. Okay. All of our water's connected now. All right. Now we're ready to drop this in. We connect the drain. We bring these to our shutoff valves, and that's it. Good to go. Really what we want to do is <clears throat> install towards the front, make sure all the plumbing pipes are getting back in there. Before you drop the lid, have a peek. Make sure nothing is pinched. Okay. Now is a great time to consider the final resting place of our cabinet. Okay, because we want to do is we want to get some silicone. I prefer the clear. We want to get a couple of dabs underneath the counter on top of the cabinet. So it bonds them together. And then when we're finished, we're going to put a bead of white silicone across the back here to get rid of that shadow. And that'll bond the countertop to the wall, on the countertop to the cabinet, and then the cabinet sitting on the floor. Nothing will ever move. <laughs> oh, well, be darned, eh? This countertop fits right flush with this cabinet. It's an interesting design, and we don't need much of this. In fact, if you put too much there, it'll just end up squeezing out all over the place. We put it on both sides, just a little dollop. Okay. Uh, God, made a hell of a mess, didn't I? Yep, I got it all over the damn place, didn't I? Let's get this before it dries. Okay, <laughs> got to hook a wash up, my god. Here we go, let's we'll start with the drain because it's higher up. We got this fancy little washer on here. That's going to be awesome. Okay. Okay, well, and that's waiting for that one to come. We got to get this back in here. That's just dry fit, right? And then we got this under here. Okay. So first thing is first. Uh, I hate dry fitting like this because you never really know where they're going to end up. found it. Not my favorite situation. Okay. Well, that actually works. Oh, dry fit really good. That's not a perfect scenario, but we can still get a wrench on it if we need to. Let's do it this way. I'll loosen it off on this elbow so I can lift this up. How much pressure is that under? Oh, hardly none. Yeah, that's gonna be just fine. I'm gonna get the glue out now. And glue that last connection in the drain. Okay, here we go. Inside the pipe, inside the pipe. Get that back to that dry fit location. When you're gluing your last joint like that, don't leave it dry fit. Finish connecting all of your joints, and then <clears throat> just give it a bit of a wiggle. Make sure that all the pressure is taken off the joint and the glue setting right where it's going to be perfectly fine forever. Okay, now we still have the water off here. So now is the perfect time. Take our wrench and remove our shutoffs. What in the hell did I just do there? Yeah, that's not good. Okay, um, I can't really see any way that I can do this. I still have a camera on this. <clears throat> Try that one. All right. 
this might work. The key is to hold the valve body and, and twist this off. After you get the first couple quarter turns, you should be able to do this with your hand. Okay. Remember, these valve bodies are supposed to be under compression. Make sure they're nicely compressed. <laughs> Here comes my hot water supply. Left faucet to the left water supply. That's usually a really good way to start. We're just going to go like this until we make contact with the gasket. You'll know because you'll feel the resistance. There we go. There's the gasket there. And we're just going to give it a hold the valve here. Give it an extra a uh, little bit of love. All right. Yeah, same thing. We'll take this one off. Uh. Go. The key here, guys, is trying to not have that soft copper compromised. Okay? Put in a bit of an S curve or a loop if you have to. Or get a shorter faucet supply line. And if you have to, if it's going to create pressure up here where the soft copper is, all right, then gently move your copper line from here, not the joint and not at the top. Okay, so I couldn't, I can, I can put a bit of a soft curve in it right here to take the pressure off. I'm gonna just tighten this up here. All right, I'll make sure that these are still closed. Yep. Whew. Now that they're closed and installed, we can go turn the water back on at the, at the front by the city road. And then I can come in here and slowly increase pressure and confirm that all of our joints are not leaking. <laughs> okay, now here's just a little bit of a word of warning, some experience talking. When I go out to the street and I turn the valve, the water meter's just spinning like a mad dog because it's rushing in, right? It's filling it up. If you had the water off in your house for three or four hours like we have today, what you're gonna find is that people have flushed their toilets, okay? Or you've also drained out the water line. And depending on the size of your home, how many toilets, how many people, how many water lines, it can take almost a whole minute in order to repressurize a line. Well, you don't wanna stand out there for a whole minute. What if you got a leak? <laughs> a whole minute is five gallons of water. So if you got a leak, that's not a cool thing. So what I do is I try to go open it up, watch it spin, count to five, maybe 10, come back in, double check. Do that two or three times. I would rather come in and out of the house two or three times than clean up five gallons of water in my home. Make sense? All right, the other thing is you can get somebody else on the phone and you can have them on the phone looking at what, you, what the work you've done, confirming that there's no problems so that you're not having a panic attack while you're out there. You can control how much water you're letting in your house. All right, I was out there on my third trip and uh, counting to 10. Because um, the first time I didn't even get any water coming into the house, right? I could open a faucet, there's no pressure yet. The second time, there's a little bit of water. So the third time I was ready to turn it off to come in and check. And I saw the dial go, ooh, slow right down. Did another half turn, that was it. I'm like, okay, we must be good. Once it started seeing it go slow, I'm like, I'm feeling better. We'll come back in here now. We're gonna do this. Realizing I've got a joint here, and a joint here, and a joint here that I have to pay attention to. So we're gonna go just release a little bit of water. You can hear that click. That was pressure going into that line. Let's have a look. Yep, now it's pressurized. Air is gone, and there's my water, okay. So now I know I'm pressurized here and up here, and I can open this fully now until I compress my gasket inside. Remember, that's a cartridge. There's two gaskets. 
When it's all the way closed, this gasket's doing all the work. And when it's all the way open, this gasket's doing all the work. If you leave it half and half, the older the gaskets, the thinner and more dried out they are, the less they're going to work. They're going to start dripping. Okay, we'll do the same with this line. Get the air out of there. Mm, full open. Okay, so why? Yeah. That is the faucet. This has got water restricting faucet. Okay, that is full power. <laughs> and this is what's going on today. We'll get rid of that now. We'll double check to see if we have any immediate drips on the drain. Look at all that goop, eh? All right. So far, so good. Now we're going to do the rest of the flood test on this. First, let me clean up and I'll show you how I do my flood test. Now, this is my P-trap. Chances are, if there's a leak, I'm going to get it here, okay, or here, or here, or here, or here, <laughs> or here, or here. Two, four, six, seven different locations. Even eight. If this wasn't tight enough, I could get a leak here. I got eight spots, plus all these joints that I glued today to keep an eye on. So there's two tests you want to do. First is running water. Okay? There's not a lot of pressure there. So if you've got a real bad glue job or a really bad joint, something's misaligned, you're going to know about it. You run this for a minute, and what I do is you run your hands around all your joints. See if it, it, you get a drip of water anywhere. Okay? So far, I'm good. Now I'm going to run that for 30 seconds or so and see if water finds its way through one of the threads. If so, stop, take it apart, see where the, there's something under compression. If we force something to, to fit together. Remember plastic, um, when you over tighten, it, it goes from a circle to an O shape under pressure. So if, we, if I put too much tension somewhere, I can actually change the shape of the, of the pipe and then the water can find a way up. So that's a possibility. Or there's just not enough Teflon, or there's dirt built up somewhere, right? Because I'm reusing it, that's a possibility too. Now I'm here for now a full minute. Okay, nothing's leaking. There's another test you want to do. And that is you close the sink and you fill the sink full of water. And this is the flood test. And I'll tell you why you want to use this one. Because all of those joints that we talked about, as long as the water is spiraling down a pipe going in one direction, okay? If they're somewhat closed together, you're fine. The water's moving. But when you have a full sink of water, okay, it backs up inside the pipe. And then if you have a problem with the top side of the joints, it'll leak out. And that's how you figure this one out. So we're going to fill the sink, and then we're going to just let it go all at the same time. It'll fill the pipe with water and not just running water full of air. And that will be the second test. You don't want to do that as your first test in case you got a really bad joint. <laughs> you get water everywhere. And the reason I'm using the paper towel is because if I just get a minor leak, it's going to drip. And if I get a wet spot on that paper towel, I know I got a drip somewhere. And then it's my job to find it. So what I do is I'll start at the top, do all the highest points first and work my way down until I find where the water's coming from. Because I don't want to go, oh, it's, it, it's, it's broken here because there's a drip coming to the bottom. Because it could be coming from any one of those joints and be dripping from the bottom. So that's why you'd always start at the top first. Start where you think it's driest. Start at the back, work your way here, check underneath. There we go. Now remember, this sink doesn't have an overflow, so pay attention. <laughs> We're just going to go like this. Now you hear all that rushing water? That is a much better flood test than just running the tap. Okay? There we go. That's the Coke bottle test. That was full of water. I got one dry hand still. I'm just going to double check. Yeah, I'm good to go. All right, now, since I'm living here, this is great. I'm going to leave that towel under there for the first week. You'd be surprised how many times in my career I got a call back going, hey, there's a small drip under the sink, and that could be like three days later. All right, uh, life happens. And if there's one little imperfection somewhere in the system with the thread, water will find its way out eventually, not necessarily in the first five minutes. Okay, now we know we don't have a major problem. 
there's still a possibility we might need to do some kind of a minor adjustment down the road. So, word to the wise, if you're in business and you're doing plumbing for people, um, be prepared to have some sort of a service call uh, program in your repertoire, like on the way home from work at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock at night. If you have to, you have to. All right? Uh, plumbing isn't a perfect science. Even the plumbers will tell you they have to do service calls on their own work. That's just the nature of the beast, right? You can have good practices and good processes and good products. At the end of the day, <sighs> life happens. Now, all we've got to do is throw our drawers back in, attach the hardware, and then we've got to make sure that everything back here is still nice and dry because we want to put a silicone bead on that. All right? But first, let's do all the drawers. Silicone last. Always silicone last. Once you put that silicone on, you don't want to touch that cabinet again. You're going to walk away and not even see it until the next day. Force them in. They're always greasy. My wife will be so excited to see this bathroom finished. I'm actually going to go give this vanity a, a little nudge to the left and see if I can center that even more. You and the whole world can kiss my ass, right? Look at that. There we go. Perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I'm going to pull out the track. This little C-shaped, okay, black little plastic piece here. You want to set the cabinet into it and then run it about an inch down. It'll carry the weight at that point. Reach the other side, line that one up, and then just force it into play, okay? It's that simple. So we're sitting here and the camera guy says, well, those clip-on plastic water supply things for the faucet are amazing. That's a game changer, right? Eh? And I remembered the little cap that was on the end of that supply line. You've got to maintain that cap through the whole installation right until you're ready to put it all together. Because there's a, a washer on the end of that. And if you nick the washer or scratch it while you're feeding it through the holes and putting all the metal pieces on, and then you get a water supply leak from that fixture, that's not a warranty claim. okay? because the instructions tell you to keep that protective cap on there right until you're done. If you don't, that's on you. Okay. Yeah. Huh? Come on, baby. What's it? Why are you fussing? so strange. Huh. It seems odd that it's an obstruction. Okay, let's try that again. Why oh, this is supposed to be simple, you know? like twisted too. Oh great. <laughs> Making this difficult on myself. Well we know it goes here. <laughs> okay. Picky 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 eh? Just that. That's got a twist to it, eh? I don't like this rubbing. Let's see if we can make an adjustment here with these four screws. what you get when you buy Hampton Bay or home decorators or whatever. Eh? Hmm. All right. Be 
being picky. We got uh, a couple of those. Let's we'll get everything out of the packaging. And these are the main ones. And they even give us a bag of these. Because the handles come with screws from the manufacturer. The people who put this cabinet together know that they're not putting a handle just to this. They're putting it over a drawer. So these are useless. And they gave us a bag of these. Same screw, but a lot longer. Good on them. At least they got that part figured out. <laughs> uh, okay. Ah, save that for another day. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna need one bag of the original. Because the top two drawers are getting installed with one part of the handle through the double and one part of the handle through the single. Here we go. Don't be in a quick hurry to throw things out. Remember, always start off finger tightening these things. Okay, your fingers aren't strong enough to cross thread them. And then you can finish with the drill. To see how deep a screw is going to actually fit in this thing. I don't think that handle will receive that screw. Yeah, that's as far as it goes. Classic. Of course this isn't going to work, right? I need 5 eighths. Boy. That just makes it, but down here, see this panel is 5 eighths thick, but check this out. The hole gets screwed in the recess of the door. Okay? So that's not going to work. I need to find some sort of a washer. This is going to come up against the cabinet. You see that? That's, that's tight. I need at least two cabinet washers to make that. And let's see if this will even close. Yeah, it'll close. All right. So what we're going to do today, guys, is not worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, figures in. I'm gonna just take time to go to the hardware store. One more trip. Listen, when you get to the end of the project, there's always like a million things. It's called the punch list. Okay? These screws, I can get the same screw in a shorter dimension, or I can buy something called a, um, a cabinet washer. And it's kind of like, it's a ring, but it's, it's got a bit of a hump, so you can build up. You can add two or three together and make sure everything's nice and tight. In this case, I probably buy the screw shorter if I can. Although the Home Depot that I'm working with, it's a little bit on the smaller size. So they don't have everything that I'm used to buying. The good news is the rest of these are just a regular long screw and they are working fine. Hold on a damn second. That is the long one, right? Did I grab a short one by accident? Yeah, I did. <laughs> How did that sneak in there? Are there any short ones at all in here? What in the heck? Oh, no kidding. Oh, the buggers. <laughs> the bag of long screws is only for the four drawers. And I've already used two screws to get the top ones in because <laughs> they shipped me two screws short. Oh, classic. Classic. Oh, Home Depot. Oh, my goodness. Does anybody ever actually go through and install your own product to find out what you're missing? And who are you paying to put these purchase orders together? Oh, okay. So, now to finish this install, I need cabinet screws and I need two more longer screws. Fantastic. This is the gift that keeps on giving this vanity, isn't it? <clears throat> So many opportunities to learn stuff. Like, every time you run out of something, don't go to the store to get the part. <laughs> if I was smart, I would have done all the doors and drawer handles and everything first. 
just to make sure I wasn't running into problems like this. Because now, today already, I've been to the store twice. And that is still rubbing on something. It's like, what in the hell is going on in here? Yeah, that drawer glide is just totally busted. I'm gonna have to replace the whole drawer glide. <laughs> Hear that? <laughs> if it wasn't so funny, I'd be crying. <laughs> oh my goodness. Never again. That's the last time I save money and buy something cheap. And it's not even that cheap, you know? It's like, it costs a good dollar. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Well, next up, I guess we'll install the mirror. And then I gotta throw my lens covers in, cover plate, put the plug back in the wall, a little bit of silicone, some touch up paint. Oh, heck. That ain't nothing. So, not bad. I'm one handle short, I gotta get screws. I'm one drawer glide needing replacement. <laughs> I still need to do the silicone, but if we're gonna hang the mirror, which we should right now, I am not gonna silicone until everything is done. Because if I drill a hole through the tile, I'm gonna get dust. It's gonna be red because it's tile ceramic, and it'll mess up my silicone. So, let's grab the mirror. Okay, just got back from the store, did a lot of shopping. It's amazing whenever you make a list of things you need and you get them all at the same time. I want a time saver. I got like 12 different items and a bunch of them I was thinking about yesterday. I just, oh yeah, I needed that. Check this out. Um, down here in the States, they call these finishing washers. So up where I live in Canada, we call them cabinet washers. So same thing, only different. Here we go. Check these out. This is what I'm talking about. Okay, so they, they, they're, they're raised up. They're not a flat washer, they're rather thick. They're an eighth thick. And if you stack them together, a few at a time, you can get up to a quarter, all right? So that's the whole goal here. So let's take out the screw. Here we go. Now the other option is if you have a really good pair of snips. Like there's, um, there's wire snips out there for electricians. And they actually have the threading in the snip itself that you can put in. There we go. Now it's snug. Beautiful. Perfect every time. Perfectly ugly and yet perfect. <laughs> now, you gotta love a Home Depot that gives you like shit options. My Home Depot, you can buy everything loose and just fill up the bag. Done and done. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! Okay, now we also have one more handle. So I went out and I bought a couple of screws here that are inch and a quarter. I guessed it was a number 832. Thank God. Okay. Because there are two options with handles. It could have been metric, right? There we go. So now we'll stick this in. And it should come out just a little bit on the other side, and it does. And yeah, I could have got a little longer. I want an inch and a half. They had inch and three quarters there. I was like, ah. Uh, do I really need inch and three quarters? section of the store is really tiny so you can't get the right thread with the right length with the right head in the right size pack you want ever you're either buying like a thousand screws or you're buying two or you can buy three when you need four and buy a second package but the head's always wrong there uh, uh, it's just a really tiny department 
Anyway, maddening. Moving on. I don't want to let it ruin my day. Hmm, any more than it already has? It's tough, you know, because I get it, Home Depot. It's a small store. It's a small market. I'm just glad you were handy, but I'm starting to redefine the, the, the word handy. What's the point of being close to the market if the store is going to be half the size? There's just too many things you're missing out on. Anyway, let's move on. So here's our mirror. Yay. Comes with the, these hooks here and here. The idea is you drill a hole, you put in a plug, you put in a screw, you leave the screw recessed, you set it on the screw. One of the reasons why I went with the vanity on this grout line as a center line is because it makes things like this really easy to install. Because I've already got a horizontal line. This is exactly 24 inches. So here's the top of my mirror. No one's ever going to see it. I'm putting my little red mark. That's my center line. Okay. Now I can measure over to this location right here. All right. Boom. The middle of this. And it is exactly eight and an eighth. And this one is exactly eight and a quarter. They're different, and that's okay. Eight and a quarter. Eight and an eighth. Piece of cake. Now, it's also only a half an inch from the top. So, because of that, we're going to identify where this goes. Okay, we don't want it too tall. Let's go with something like that. Okay. Hey. Three and a half inches from the top. Uh, plus a half inch for the hardware makes it four inches from the top. Four inches from here is my screw line. Okay. Now I'm going to go through my laser line on that and then I can measure off the grout line to put in my screws. So we take our number eight and an eighth measure on the left, but we're going to put that on the right. Eight and an eighth from the middle of the grout line. Bam and laser. Eight and a quarter. Middle of the grout line. Eight and a quarter. Bam. Laser. This one needs to go a little higher. Yeah, they're at the same height. Even the line's moving. I can just go hand pair it. Good. Beautiful. Now, um, I went out and I picked out some screws and plugs. Okay, you can use screws and plugs in ceramic tile. That's not a problem. This is a number eight one inch screw. Plenty holds 22 pounds. This is a eight pound mirror. <laughs> if you look on the side, it'll actually tell you the size of the hole you need to drill to be able to set the plug and the screw in. So we go and buy the corresponding glass and tile bit to drill that size hole put in that size plug to then put in that size screw to then hang this much weight. Nice and simple. They come in 3 sixteenths. They come in quarter inch. They come in 5 eighths. It's all kinds of different sizes, all right? Just make sure you match your bit with your hardware according to the directions of the hardware and you will be okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had a real drill. <clears throat> but I'm not buying a second set of tools while I'm down here. I bought the most versatile products that I can buy to get the job done. Now, we're going to put our bit there. Try to keep it from running around by going slow and pushing hard. Square to the wall. Boom. Done. Next one. All right. Uh. Come on, honey. Get the sweet spot. There we are. Okay, so on the back side of both of those holes is an empty space. This tile was mounted in drywall. These little plugs here are rated for drywall and they should shove right in that hole without too much resistance. You always use the back side of your tape measure. Okay, and if they don't make it all the way, that's fine. Remember, it's designed for drywall. There we go. We take our knife under control in case you scratch the tile. You want to be behind the mirror where that happens. Okay, there we go. Get rid of that, get rid of that. We take our screws. 
which are fabulous because they've got this lovely large head. So it's very easy for the, those metal clips on the mirror to grab these. Right in the middle of that. Drive that to about a half an inch off the wall. There we go. All right. Now you take your mirror, you take these clips and you lean them out, okay? Just like that. It's very easy to find where we're going. I'm gonna put my thumbs about the same height of where those clips are. All right, and then get in behind here. Okay, line up the center. Oh, I got one, not the other. That always seems to happen. Here we go. Now we do that. Now, the question is, is this level? Let's check. We are three, five eighths. And here I am, three, ah, maybe a little bit more than five eighths. Okay? So what can I do to make that stand up a little taller? That's an easy question to answer. Be right back. There's a lot of variables going on here. The assumption was that these are hung at the same height, that the, the screw is gonna hit the same part of the curve, okay? There's a lot of variables when you're dealing with the curve. So, if you get close, but not quite, not a worry, we're out a 16th, but a 16th over three feet actually adds up, right? Take your electrical tape, all right? And just do a couple of runs on that screw, and you will make up the thickness of that gap in a heartbeat. Okay, that is a vinyl tape. There we go. There we go. Perfect every time. <laughs> Just when you thought I had no more tricks up my sleeve. <laughs> now, in this scenario, we're gonna to try to cut this really clean. We don't wanna have little tips sticking around here like this. That gets in the way, it'll drag through the silicone while I'm applying it. Now that's a nice clean tip. Okay? All right. Now, of course, release the bar. Silicones need to be punctured. Right up to the top here, you know you've punctured it, okay? You don't have to check, you don't have to stab it three or four times. One and done. All right, now. Just to get that out of the way, I'm gonna try to start in the middle and go from both directions. Not doing a, do a nice job here, okay, because you got the taps in the way. So you gotta work both sides of the taps. You're gonna be doing cleaning. That's fine. Now, once we get out of there, we can put the right pressure and pull it. And unless there's air bubbles in that tube, which there are sometimes, we'll get a nice full stream. Release the pressure. Okay, make sure it's clean. And give it a wipe. Not too much pressure. The secret is knowing the shape of your finger and how much caulking is there and how much pressure to use. It comes out perfect like that every single time. If you have difficulty doing this or you don't have experience, you can run tape on both sides, use a special tool to form the, the line. That's fine. Don't feel bad. I have applied caulking on enough surfaces in my life. I know exactly which finger to use for which situation. Well, this is a bigger gap, so I'm gonna change my angle. Go from counter to wall. Okay. Same thing. Clean. Pull it. Less pressure here because there's extra con extra material. 
You can feel it on your hand riding up, right? You're either pushing it into the hole or you're pushing it up the wall or onto the counter. Yeah. There we go. No fuss, no muss, no tape. Done in 30 seconds. Oh yeah, one more thing. Don't touch anything around here for till tomorrow. <laughs> While that is setting, it is pure white. You don't even want to have a breeze come into this room and blow dust around. All right? Cheers.